What's going on YouTube? It's Juice Audio. Today I'm gonna to giving you the two year review of my Soft 2 Console 1. I'm gonna be talking about why this piece could be a great investment for your studio and why it could be a horrible investment. I'm also gonna be mixing a track that I produced with the SSL 4000 e board and the SSL 9000 and showing you the difference between the two. And stick around because I'm gonna be talking about the one knob that a lot of engineers have been buying this board solely for. All right, let's get started. All right, so here it is, the Soft 2 Console 1. I'm gonna be taking you guys through all the features of this console and what it can do and its limitations. So first I wanna start by saying and getting this out the way that there is no analog circuitry in this board. It is all digital. All you're literally doing is controlling the plugin. So whatever works being done is being done in the plugin. So with that out of the way, I wanna start talking about its limitations with software if you know me, then I produce everything on Fruity Loops. I love FL Studio for producing, but for mixing, I like Logic. And uh, the thing about this soft tube is that it sucks in Fruity Loops. It does not do much in Fruity Loops. You gotta do anything, everything manually, load every channel strip and name every channel strip one by one and do it properly. So that really sucks for me, but I still end up pulling it up on almost every channel strip and just using it digitally with my mouse and keyboard. Cause I really do love the sound of the emulations this provides and like the punch. And I do love mixing without looking at a graph or like on pro Q three. And, uh, I just find it easier to mix, you know, when I'm not looking at it and get better results. So in logic, uh, there is a new update that it controls almost everything in logic. All the pans will be mirrored on logic. All the volumes will be mirrored on logic, which is super helpful. I don't know why it took so long to come out, but it did. I haven't updated my logic yet because I don't want any problems right now. So to get started, first you want to load console one on every channel that you have. And on every channel, I have the drive turned up to middle ground. That is the sweet spot for getting a little bit of analog warmth and transformer warmth without overdoing it. And I tend to find that people do that and it almost is like analog summing, basically, if you know what that is is uh, running every bus or instrument through a little bit of analog gear and give it a little bit of flavor. So you hit on, then we got three different modes here. We got this overall mode, and then we got the down there at the bottom and a really small one down, down there at the bottom. So here's gonna be the main screen. As you can see, when I hit buttons, it corresponds to the buttons on the screen. And they're all mashed up in Logic, luckily, and they don't you have to type in the names. And this live, this session right here is going to be one of my new beats called Canopy, uh, produced with HNZ, and it's almost all live instruments, uh, besides one of the keyboards that I did MIDI. So, as you can see, uh, next to the the number, I have the name, like example, kick one, uh, kick in, kick out but there's also going to be the mic name right next to it. So for the kick in, we got the D12 VR. Love that mic. Kick out, we got the LA220. Shout out Lawton Audio, we got something coming up. We got Snare Top 57, D2, D4, D6, AKG C414, which I love a lot. AKG C1414 again. Then we got a bunch of Kempers and LA320s from Lawton Audio. So now I'm going to give you a... Uh, I'm gonna let you guys hear the track. This is only like a 30, 40 second segment of the track. And uh, all the plugin is loaded right now with the saturation in the middle. So take a listen.
So before we get to mixing, I want to show you all the tools available on this console. So starting over here, we got the input gain. We got the on modes, as I was explaining earlier. Low cut, high cut. We got a couple buttons on here, phase, filters, compressor, presets. The shift button, which could do secondary functions as they're labeled here. Then we got the shape, which is also the gate equalizer and compression. And then we got the one knob I was mentioning earlier that everybody loves. So this knob is going to be the drive knob with the character along with it. The drive knob on this, a lot of people love. I really love, honestly. And um, a lot of engineers have been buying this board just to use that one knob, honestly, for vocals or for any instrument. As a nice, it has a lot of the cool saturation in there. So on each channel, you could change it to be something specific. Instead of changing the whole board outright, you could change each thing to be something. You, if you want the 9,000 gate, and you want the 4,000 EQ, and you want the 9,000 compressor, and you want the soft tube saturation, you can easily do that by hitting shift, strip. That's going to change the whole thing. But if you hit shift, shape, you could pick one of those out. But uh, as you can see there, there's also UAD. I don't own these plugins. I don't know why UAD does this, UAD does this, but it makes you download the whole plugin even though you don't have it when you download their console. So if I select strip here, you can see the, all the different options that they offer. I really want to try the Empirical Labs because I love the Distressor sound, but I'm not going to buy it. So with all the tools out of the way, let's get to mixing. You guys heard the track already. What we're going to do now is mess with the kick and uh, show you how this EQ and shape and compression sounds. And then uh, I'll mix the whole track and we'll see how it sounds. So what I'm going to do is solo number one, the kick D12 VR solo play. All right, I'm gonna start with a low cut. You can change how fast these knobs move as well in the settings. I, at first, when it comes stock, they move super slow. And I really don't wanna be cranking these knobs a lot to wear them down, so I like when it moves fast. All right, now we'll mess with the gate. That's what I mean by the clicky gate. And this punk punch function it, uh, really pulls the transient out, transient out the other way. Let's do a little touch. Thank you. I'll loop this. So I really love this EQ because it provides a lot of punch. I noticed a lot of quick punch to all the tracks I mix it with. And um, I really love how that sounds, honestly. That's still 4,000 is a little grittier, a little more mid sounding than the 9,000. Now right, moving on to compression, brings the ratio up a little bit. Leave the attack long. Oops. I'm just gonna take a little bit off. All right. So that is the kick inside, the D12VR from AKG. You can check out the drive here. Nice clip sound from a transformer. And then pull this knob right. That's gonna make it transformer biased. If we move it left, it's gonna be two. So you can hear all that thickness out of it, which is too much to be honest, in my opinion. So pretty cool if you can get fast at that and uh, work out your workflow nice, you can definitely go through this process mad quick. All right, so now what you're about to hear is the mix track. It took me like, I don't know, five, six minutes on it. 
uh, there's going to be no reverb, no effects. The only plugins you're going to hear is going to be the console one plugin with the SSL 4000 emulation. Sounds pretty good, honestly. It's really punchy and clear. Um, definitely some room to fit in vocals there. Uh, we'll go through uh, some of the instruments that I mixed real quick. Let's hear the kick. You already heard that. Kick out. Snare top. There is bleed. It's not too much uh, wiggle work with that gate, honestly, but it is what it is. Toms. Overhead left, overhead right, this is the full drum kit. I'll show you the full drum kit with console one off. The levels will be different though, of course. Guitars now. Let's take a look at the bass actually. See what I did to it. Uh, it's did a high pass and a lot of compression. You can do side chaining with the gate actually, but it's never messed with it yet. Bongos. Nice. The keys. This is the only MIDI instrument out of all of them. Guitars verse. A lot of mid-range in there. Sounds pretty good. Then over here we got the guitar plucks. Keys left. Keys right. Really quiet guitar, more of a rhythm backup. Then we got the guitar solo, nice distorted and mid rangey Pretty honky, I like it though. So yeah, that's the basis of this track. So now what I'm about to show you is how the drive sounds, the transformer sound of this board is. And uh, I'm gonna apply it to all the tracks. I'm gonna turn it up and down and adjust the character so you guys can see the difference it makes uh, for this fake analog type summing. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna hit shift, all. Everything is gonna be, be controlled. Let's play the song. <laughs> So this is going to be the tube side.
I think it takes a lot of edge out of the transients and uh, it brings up a lot of transformer, uh, I would say mid range. I noticed that with a lot of analog gear, it really brings up the mid range detail. But it does smear the transient a little bit, but I really like how it glues everything together. It's a more analog sounding thing and it doesn't sound digital anymore. So I really like that. But what I'm gonna do now is change out all the channel strips for the SSL 9000. Keep in mind they have different values for everything, so it might be a little crazy, but let's see how that is. So first thing I noticed uh, while listening to this, even though the values are all different and the mix is completely different, I noticed that all the sounds have more of a spot to fit in. There's less cloudiness around them. And uh, I guess that's in part, there's not much saturation going on, even though the drive is up. So it's more of a crystal clear, deep sound. It's more, a little more punchy and a little more, a little more extension than the lows and highs. But it also did lose its grittiness. It lost its, it lost its tone, honestly. For this track, I do prefer the 4000. This is a really he a guitar heavy track. I love the saturation and grittiness that it brings and a little, a little transient taming, taming uh, features that the 4000 has. The SSL 9000 I heard is more tailored to towards clean music, uh, clean sounding recordings as in maybe sample based recordings like rap, hip hop, uh, R&B, stuff like that where the grit is not too involved. Less aggressive sounding, less gritty type of music. So definitely not rock or neo soul in this in instance. Yeah, since we're done mixing, showing you guys the features of the soft tube console one, I'm now gonna give you my final verdict of this board, if it was worth having, so stay tuned. So how do you know if the soft tube console one is right for you in your studio and your workflow? The soft tube console one costs $600 right now, and that's a pretty decent investment for your studio. Uh, for me, I've had it for about two years now, and I wanna say that I really love it. It does come with some headaches though, so keep that in mind. The one thing I really did not like about it is the integration with FL Studio and the integration with Logic, which they just now upgraded. Another thing that I really don't like about this board is the software issues with licensing. The way you have to set it up with iLock and do all this and that, it, it gets annoying, like I'm not even kidding you. Right before I started filming this video, I updated it and it took me an hour just to get it back to working how it should have been. So that was really frustrating, but if you buy this board, expect there's gonna be some stuff like that happening. But yeah, I think it'll still worth it, even though with the problems, I still really love this board. So how do you tell if this board is right for you and your workflow? Do you primarily record live instruments or do you do sample based recordings? Me, I produce all my music, mostly live with the piano here, bongos, claps, real guitars, real instruments. So I end up using mics a lot, open mics. So if you look at the board, the tools you have available is a gate, EQ, and compression. I'm gonna be using all these to, to achieve the sound I want. But if you're doing sample based recordings like MIDI keys or B pads, 808 drums, you're not gonna be using a gate. You'll probably barely be using the compressor and the EQ you might be using just a tad because usually that stuff comes out the box really sounding really nice. So if you do primarily live recordings, live instruments, acoustic instruments, this board would be great for your workflow. If you're doing mo mostly sample bass recordings and vocal recordings, I would probably stay away from this board, honestly. But as far as all the tools I have avail available, I really like everything they've given you. I don't use this board to its full extent like some other people do. For what I use it for, I really like it and I'm glad I, I bought it. It really helped develop my ears for live mixing, for studio mixing, and getting used to going back to their old workflow of mixing with your ears. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, you already know. I'm gonna be dropping a video every week now. So, cheers.